In 1973, Can lost their charismatic vocalist, Damo Suzuki, after the completion of their fourth studio album, Future Days. Today, we look at the first post-Suzuki release, Soon Over Babaluma, the fifth studio album by legendary German band Can. Hi, I'm Andy Fenstermaker, host of Poetic Wax, a weekly music history series where I dig into the record collection I've been building since the 1990s. I stumbled upon this original pressing of Soon Over Babaluma a little over half a decade ago. Released in November of 1974, Babaluma has now turned 50. And it was pivotal not just for the band, but for the entire Krautrock movement. Let's rewind a little and look at the events that led up to this release, including, most notably, the departure of Damo Suzuki. Can's enigmatic and highly influential lead singer. By the early 1970s, Can had already cemented their status as one of the most experimental and genre-defying bands of the burgeoning krautrock scene. The band was made up of some serious talent. Irman Schmidt, a classically trained keyboardist who had studied under the avant-garde composer Karlheinz Stockhausen. Guitarist Mikkel Caroli, whose interest in psychedelic rock added an unpredictable layer to their sound. Yaki Liebitzite, one of the most innovative drummers in what was then modern music. And Holga Chukai, the band's bassist and resident sound manipulator. Together, they created a sound that blended improvisation, experimental rock, and non-Western influences. Around 1970, Can brought in Damo Suzuki as their lead vocalist, whose spontaneous, almost shamanic performances took the band's music to new heights. Suzuki fronted some of Can's most iconic albums, including Tago Mago and Ege Bamiatsi, which are regarded as landmarks in experimental rock. However, after their 1973 album, Future Days, Suzuki abruptly left the band to pursue a life as a Jehovah's Witness. This left Can at a critical juncture. Without their charismatic frontman, the band had to decide, should they search for a new vocalist or should they reinvent themselves once again? In classic Can fashion, they chose the road less traveled. Rather than replacing Suzuki, they took the opportunity to reshape their sound. On Soon Over Babaluma, guitarist Mikkel Caroli and keyboardist Irman Schmidt stepped up to handle vocals, and the band shifted towards a more instrumental, texture-driven approach. This decision not only marked a new chapter in Can's evolution, but also demonstrated their commitment to pushing the boundaries and exploring new musical terrain. Now, Can's music is often tucked under the Krautrock label, but it's important to understand what that term actually means. Krautrock was a term coined by British journalists to describe a wave of German experimental rock bands in the late 60s and early 1970s. These groups like Kraftwerk, Neu, and of course Can, were breaking away from the mainstream sounds of rock and pop, often using unconventional time signatures, electronic elements, and improvisational techniques. For further viewing, recommend checking out last week's episode on Kraftwerk's groundbreaking track Autobahn. However, Can was different even within this experimental landscape. While many krautrock bands were exploring electronic and motoric rhythms, Can was pulling from a far broader palette of musical influences. On Soon Over Babaluma, you hear traces of jazz, world music, and the emerging aesthetics of ambient music. In some ways, it's hard to even categorize the album because it moves so freely between genres. The journalist David Stubbs, in his book Future Days, Krautrock and the Building of Modern Germany, describes Can's music as a merger of the avant-garde and psychedelic funk, holding it all together through their highly improvisational ethos. This ethos is particularly evident on Soon Over Babaluma, where the band seemed to fully embrace a fusion of not just genres, but moods and atmospheres. 
Well, some krautrock bands leaned heavily into the repetitive robotic rhythms. Can was always fluid and always unpredictable. Tracks like Dizzy Dizzy and Chain Reaction embody this genre fusion perfectly. One of the most fascinating aspects of Suit Over Babaluma is how Can approached the recording process. By this time, Can had set up their own studio, Inner Space, in a converted cinema in Cologne. This studio wasn't just a space to record, it kind of became an instrument in itself. Holga Chukai, who handled much of the sound engineering, was deeply influenced by his time studying under Karl Heinz Stockhausen. Stockhausen, one of the pioneers of electronic music, taught Chukai to treat sound not just as a byproduct of instruments, but as a malleable material to be shaped and manipulated. Using the studio as an instrument was revolutionary at the time. Chukai employed tape lutes, pitch shifts, and other electronic effects to create soundscapes that didn't sound like anything else being recorded in the mid-1970s. This was particularly evident in tracks like Quantum Physics, which is essentially an ambient track filled with swirling, otherworldly textures. The way Can manipulated sound on this album would go on to influence many genres, from ambient music to post-punk and electronica. According to Chukai, when you look at sound not as a fixed object, but as something you can mold and shape, you realize that the studio can be used as an extension of your creativity. This mindset was central to the making of Soon Over Babaluma, and it's why the album feels so atmospheric and immersive. Another crucial element of Can sound, and especially on Soon Over Babaluma, is their use of non-Western rhythms and scales. While most rock bands in the 1970s were drawing from blues and folk and classical music, Can was looking further afield. Drummer Yaki Liebitzeit, who had a background in free jazz, was heavily influenced by Afrobeat and Middle Eastern rhythms. His drumming on Soon Over Babaluma often strays far from conventional rock drumming, emphasizing complex polyrhythms and subtle shifts in timing. On tracks like Dizzy Dizzy, you can hear the incorporation of reggae-inspired rhythms, while Caroli's violin adds a haunting folk-like melody that feels entirely outside of Western scales. This fusion of influences gives the album an exotic, almost mythical quality that feels both timeless and ahead of its time. Can's ability to blend these influences was partly due to their collective interest in global music traditions. Holga Chukai once said, Western music tends to have a very narrow view of rhythm and melody. The world is full of different approaches of time and tone, and that fascinated us. This global perspective on music is a big part of what makes Soon Over Baba Luma so unique. At a time when rock music was often driven by big hooks and choruses, Can was interested in creating long, evolving soundscapes. Quantum physics exemplifies this approach, with repetitive rhythms, subtle changes in texture, and a focus on atmosphere rather than melody. This minimalistic approach aligns Can with the broader ambient movement, which was starting to emerge in the mid-1970s. I mean, acts like Tangerine Dream come to mind. Brian Eno, one of the pioneers of ambient music, famously called Can a major influence, saying Can were doing things with sound that felt like they came from another world. Their use of space and texture was a huge inspiration for what I later tried to achieve with ambient music. On Soon Over Babaluma, Can mastered the art of doing more with less. Instead of filling the space with dense layers of instrumentation, they allowed the music to breathe, creating an immersive experience for the listener. This approach would go on to influence other genres, as diverse as post-rock, electronica, and trip-hop. Let's take a closer look at some of the standout tracks on Soon Over Babaluma. Dizzy Dizzy. The album opens with this track, which immediately sets the tone for what's to come. The rhythm is light and playful, borrowing from reggae and jazz, while Caroli's violin melody feels almost hypnotic. 
His vocals are whispered and ethereal, adding a sense of mystery to the track. This combination of reggae and jazz and avant-garde rock is quintessential can, showing off their ability to merge seemingly unrelated genres into something entirely new. Chain Reaction. This track builds on the repetitive motoric beats that Can was known for, but it adds in layers of funk and rock that evolve over the song's near 12 minute runtime. The bass line and drums lock in a groove while Caroli's guitar becomes more and more chaotic as the track progresses. Perfect example of Can's ability to create tension and release through repetition and subtle variation. Quantum Physics. As the album's closer, quantum physics almost feels like a meditation. It's a sprawling, ambient piece that floats through different textures without ever settling into a clear structure. This track in particular is a precursor to the ambient music that would later dominate parts of the electronic music world. Yes, Soon Over Baba Luma occupies an interesting place in Kant's discography. It wasn't as commercially successful or as widely celebrated as Tago Mago or Ega Bamiazzi, but in many ways, it's one of their most forward-thinking records. The album's blend of global rhythms, minimalist structures, and ambient textures would go on to influence generations of musicians. David Bowie was a huge fan of Can, and you can hear the band's influence in his Berlin trilogy, especially on albums like Low. Bands like Radiohead, Sonic Youth, The Flaming Lips have all cited Can as an influence, with Soon Over Baba Luma often seen as a precursor to the experimental rock and electronic music that followed. Soon Over Baba Luma might not be Can's most famous album, but it's one of their most important. It marked the beginning of a new chapter for the band and showed just how far their musical explorations could go. And indeed, it showed that a band can successfully move on after their frontman departs. Like, subscribe, hit that little bell so you'll be notified when new episodes go live. And next, you definitely want to dig into that exploration of Autobahn, 